guys. We have Isaiah Musius, the astronaut, with us today. And he's good for questions whenever you're ready. Isaiah, is that your choice? Oh, oh, oh no, wait, so wait no, sorry. Right. Sorry. Okay. Right. Now we're good. Isaiah, is that your choice? Is the, the globe your choice? Oh, of course. Yeah, outer space. Yeah. Hopefully I can get there one day. But <laughs> as of right now, I'm a basketball player and a student, so. What, uh, what's it been I like these days? Other otherworldly, Isaiah. <laughs> yeah, otherworldly. Hopefully I can find my other self that's out there in the galaxy somewhere, but. Isaiah, what's it been like these last couple of days, I guess, kind of getting to step step away further from that Florida State game and really kind of analyze, you know, how well you guys played in some instances and what could have been better? Um, I mean, we watched some film, came in and see, saw, like, you know, the things that we did well and the mistakes that we made. But, uh, you know, we still, you know, lost the game. So, you know, we weren't as happy as we would have been if we would have won. So we tried to make sure that we, you know, made adjustments and, and fix the things that we, you know, may, messed up in that game and, you know, moving forward to get ready for, you know, Duke tomorrow. Isaiah, this is, uh, I think, the first time you guys are playing a team for the second time this season. That's a little weird. It gets to mid-February and this is the first one of these. But does that make the approach any different or is this just another game against an ACC team that you happen to have played already? This is just another game in the ACC. I mean, it, it, it's crazy to think last year we would have played at least two or three teams probably twice by now, you know. Um, but, you know, you treat it like another game. We play Duke's going to be – obviously, you know, it's going to be different because we play them already so they know we run, you know what they run. So, you know, we just got to come out and battle, play, and play basketball and, and, and go at them and make sure that we, we come out on top tomorrow night. Without giving away too much of the strategy, it seems like you would – be the first person to be checking Matt Hurt tomorrow. So given he went for 26 against you in the first game and he's coming off a game where he had 24 and only took 10 shots against State, do you kind of take it as a challenge to kind of slow him down a little bit? No, of course. I mean, he's, he's going to be a volume shooter. He's their leading scorer. He's probably one of the leading scorers in the ACC. So he's going to get up a volume amount of shots. So make everything super, super difficult for him. And and try to pressure him and force him to, you know, put on the floor. And, you know, he's a great jump shooter. So, you know, you don't want to have him get comfortable. So make sure you make it uncomfortable for him the entire night. Are they, what are the top things you guys need to do differently than what happened in Durham to come away with the win tomorrow night? Uh, definitely transition defense. 50-50 balls is something that really killed us. And the coach has been emphasizing the past three days. You know, offense rebounding, they killed us on the glass. So, and those are the three areas I think we're, if we guard the ball and, and get those 50-50 balls that we kind of lost out on, uh, we, we're going to have a really good chance of winning the game. I think it was tied at one point and we were watching film and there was a 50-50 ball where they got an and one and it kind of changed the you know trajectory of the game. And, and Duke is a team that feeds off that energy. You know, when they have the crazies there, when somebody gets a dunk, the energy is shifted towards them. So those big plays like that is something that they feed off of and we can't allow them to get those 50-50 balls or, or offensive rebound dunks because it's going to give them energy and that's how they play. They play with a lot of energy. So we have to make sure that, you know, we cut those out. How good has it been for you to to be back out on the floor with Ian the last couple games. Really great, man. He, he's a scorer and, and, and he, he opens the floor for all of us. I think, you know, him being able to get into the get into the gaps and, and drive and, and use his strength to get out there, it, it creates guys, creates for others and it forces the defense to have to shift because, you know, he's able to take a lot of guys off the bounce. So, you know, telling him to continue to be a leader and continue to, you know, be aggressive and you know when he gets in there it makes sure he plays off of two feet and, and makes the right plays and he's been doing that so he's going to continue to do that and I know you know we all have the confidence and faith in him. With Ian I'm sure you're not surprised of like the the talent that that he has but as far as just like the the transition he's made to playing so quickly what you know has that surprised you guys at all just just the impact he's made kind of almost immediately. No, I mean, he wanted to be out here, and we, we knew that he was some, some a person that in the past he's been able to score the ball. Like, he, that's what he does. Like, he's been at UC Baptist. He averaged almost, like, 20 points a game. So we knew he was going to give us that offensive firepower that we needed. Um, you know, and he came in, and when he was come, getting ready to come back, like, I, I could just see the determination in his eyes every single day. Like, he's where I'm, my roommate. So we talked about it at night when we were at the house, just chilling, watching movies. Like, we talked about, you know, he talked about how much he wanted to be back, and I was just telling him, like, yo, we – we're ready to have you back, bro. And he came back and did his thing, and he's going to continue to keep doing his thing throughout the rest of the season. 
Isaiah, talking about the 50-50 balls that you guys didn't get at Duke. you feel like you've been doing a better job of that as a team for the last month and a half? Yeah, I think there's a lot of games where we've done a, a good job, but there's some some games and, and some key moments in certain games. Like, you know, Florida State, there was a 50-50 ball that we could have got. They got a foul, you know. Um, so, you know, we've been doing a better job of, of limiting those, but we have to make sure that we get every single 50-50 ball that is possible for us. If it's in our, if it's in our possession, we, if we can get it, we need to have that 50-50 ball. So we need to make sure that we zone in on that key and, and win the 50-50 battle every single time when we can step out to any team. I know there won't be that many fans in the stands tomorrow, but after playing eight of the first 12 ACC games on the road, how good is it to kind of have a stretch where you're staying in Winston-Salem for a while and, and playing at the Joel? Feels good. I mean, you know, road, the road is hard, man. Going on the road, especially going to Florida State, Notre Dame, all these schools, like they're 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 good schools. And Florida, Florida, they had like sixty percent capacity, so it felt like a real game for this is the first time. I think any most of the guys in a wig uniform have felt a real game. So Florida State was kind of like you know a little bit of a real game for a lot of guys in terms of the fans. But um, it's great to be back, you know, be able to play a couple of games at home. Um, and I think we're trying to defend home court. You know, the past couple of games we've been undefeated at home, so I think we're trying to keep that going. And, and, once you get back on the road, get more wins. So one game at a time, one moment. And then we're going to take this game tomorrow night, you know, try to go out go out there and get a win and then, you know, move on to the next game. But one game at a time is what we're going to look at it. So. Coach was talking earlier this morning about how it takes bigs to adjust, um, takes them a little longer to adjust to the college game than a guard does. Uh, he was kind of talking about a manual. Um, can you remember when you started seeing him maybe starting to put it together in practice and like maybe start pivoting into the guy that's getting, you know, about 10 minutes a game or providing that time that he's getting now. Yeah. I think it was just a one practice where he kind of knew what he needed to do. He came, grabbed rebounds, defended, and, and it kind of flowed into the offense end for him. I think, you know, I talk to him every day and I tell him just be you like, be who you are, you know, do the little things that, you know, coach tells you to do. Like your offensive game will come and it's going to develop as your, as your years come. Like I wasn't the same offensive player I was when I first got here. I, I've added a lot of things to my game, but I made sure I did the little things like talk on defense and, and did those little things, intangible things, you know, and, and the rest of my game would develop more and more. So he's been doing a great job. And every time he comes to the game, he's super productive. He'll get a block. Uh, he'll be, you know, contesting a layup that a big gets, he'll get a rebound, you know, each game he'll get a point more. So every game you see him get better. And I think he's, he's really determined to get better every single day. And he's like, one day he's like, oh, I want to be, I want to be the best big in the ACC. And I said, you can, but you have to continue to put the work. And I think he's determined to do that. So hopefully by the time he gets to his junior, senior year, he'll, he'll be one of the best bigs in the ACC. And I think that he's going to be able to do that. Anything else for Zay? All right. Thanks guys. Appreciate uh, we will have one more in just one second. Even what's your thoughts on the background to start off? Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. I picked it up. So we've, uh, you know, we were talking to Isaiah a little bit ago, a um, little bit about Ian. I just wanted to get kind of your perspective on um, what it was like to watch him in those practices where he's working back. Like he's not playing yet, um, but he's working back. Like what was, you know, what were you seeing him kind of deal with and, and maybe not being able to play as much as he wanted to in some of those practices? You know, what was it like to watch that? Yeah, you could definitely tell coming back that he was, uh, he was very fatigued at first. I mean, being out for as long as he was, I'm not really sure. I, I mean, a month and some change he was out, so. Him to come back, you could just tell he was really fatigued, but it was good to see him out there. He was excited to be back. Uh, talking to him, he want he was he he couldn't wait to get back. Like when he got cleared, he was super excited. He came up to me, told me he was cleared. I was happy for him, and I knew he was ready to get out there. So, I mean, I definitely seen him like he was really fatigued. We tried to get him subs in and out in practice so he could stay fresh and get back into uh, game time shape. When when he gets in for, I guess the Boston College game was the first game. Um, I don't know, somebody like you or, or somebody else on the team kind of like staying in his ear about like, hey, man, if you're getting tired, make sure you sub out or like don't push too hard. Like I wonder what it was like to approach that as his teammate when he's when he's making those first appearances. 
Yeah, yeah, we definitely told him, like, yeah, if you need a sub, you got to let us know because it's his first time playing since the Longwood game, you know what I'm saying? So we definitely was in his ear just letting him know, like, hey, hey, we're here for you. You need a sub, we got you. Just let us know we get you out, but we're going to get you right back in. So to answer your question, yeah, we definitely was in his, his ear letting him know things like that. Maybe, and uh, what's it meant to have him back in the lineup, especially on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, it's, it's mean a lot. He's he's a big time scorer, you know what I'm saying? So I think I feel like he opens the floor up for a, a lot of driving lanes for other guys like me and Carter. You know what I'm saying? Like he can really shoot it. He can really score. So it's just, it's just fun to be out there with him, especially on the offensive side, like you said. Is this the first uh, – oh, sorry, Connor. Uh, Davian, getting ready to play Duke again uh, this time at home. You know, what – do you guys have to do, you know, differently as far, from the guard perspective uh, against Duke? Uh, Coach Forbes reiterated a lot today is we have to rebound. Uh, we gave up no offensive rebounds to their guards only. Uh, we have to rebound and uh, not allow them to win the 50-50 ball battle. So I feel like if you do those two things, we'd be in good shape, especially from the guard position. Yeah, I was going to ask how much in the last, like, 48 hours have you heard from Forbes about nine offensive rebounds from the guards and 50-50 balls in Durham? And has that been kind of beating into your guys' heads? Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't even tell you how many times we've heard it. But he's he's definitely beat us in our head about it, especially in practice today. You ever get tired of it? Go ahead. Go ahead. You ever get tired of him and like start start saying what he's gonna say before he says it? Like, nah, I mean, being with him from three years, I know what he's gonna say before he even says. So I mean, I'm I'm kind of used to it. Damien, in general, what was what's the tone and tenor been like the last couple of days? I mean, you guys played Florida State down to the wire, and then Florida State went out and trounced UVA last night. So there's a lot of positives you can take from that. At the same time. You didn't get the win, and it was right there in your grasp. How do you kind of balance those two things? I mean, it's just a few plays down the stretch that we, you know what I'm saying, we got we to gotta be able to make 50-50 uh, balls, uh, just mental mistakes that we shouldn't be making. I mean, we don't believe in moral victories, but like you said, that game was definitely in our grasp. That's definitely, that was definitely a winnable game for us. But it's just we just gotta learn from it, you know what I'm saying? We gotta learn how to finish off games. I think I think that was definitely our game to win. So I think that's the biggest thing we gotta learn is just learn from our mistakes and don't let it happen again. Anything else for Davian? I got one more. Um Davian, this is the first game of the year that you guys are playing the team for the second time. I'm curious if that changes the mentality at all for you guys, or if it's just another ACC game that happens to be against the team that you already played a month and a half ago? Uh, I mean, nothing's really changed as far as uh, scouting them, uh, our personnel, things like that. Uh, we just come, come in and try to execute the game plan. I mean, it's just, it's just another ACC game, like you said, that we're going to try and go out there and win tomorrow. All right, all good. Thanks, Thanks. Davian. Thank Thanks, you. Davian. Thanks, Davian.